Now I'd like to invite Ilan Ben David from Chakra Tech for his presentation, please. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ilan Ben David, and I'm in the only country in the world that I don't have to explain the name. Okay? Uh, we are called Chakra Tech, and the reason that we store energy in wheels, in flywheels, and that's why we are called Chakra Tech. I'm going to speak about the challenges of fast charging and ultra fast charging, and specifically affecting what I would call the limited city grid. And just for you to know, yes, this problem exists in India, but I will describe our customers and you will understand that actually fast charging is a challenge to the most advanced network in the world. You will see later our customers and you will understand. <clears throat> a little bit about the coming passenger car. So the main challenges right now that the EV market is facing is A, the price of the car, B, the range, and C, it's the charging time. So the, the, the car industry is now working basically on making a car that will cost like a gasoline car with a range of 400 kilometers and with fast charging. So we will have two modes of charging, the normal long charging or mostly overnight and the super fast charging where right now fast charging is 30 to 20 minutes but it's projected that in the future it will go down to 10 to 5 minutes and if you reach the 5 minutes number actually fast charging looks like refueling okay and that solves a big problem in the penetration of uh, of uh, of the <coughs> electric vehicles once this point is happening, those three targets will be reached. We expect that, uh, let's say, overall the rate of sales of EVs is in the million per year right now. It will jump very fast into 10 million per year or more. The time frame for this change is 20 to 22. Somewhere in between there, different between different reports, but this is the time frame. Actually, from infrastructure point of view, it's now. If something happened in 20 to 22, from infrastructure thinking point of view, it's now. <clears throat> Before I continue, I would like to make a small orientation chart to let you explain. This orientation chart, basically, <clears throat> when someone tried to install, to install a charger or a charging uh, farm, he asked himself, a very simple question, two simple questions. One, is my grid is limited or not limited? The, this question, I'm not saying it's in kilowatt or in megawatt, but it's actually if he has to call the utility and ask for an upgrade. That's what the meaning of this question. So this is question number one. The other side of the question is the driver. Does this driver have time? So if Let's say I'm do in a parking lot, overnight charging, the driver have time, and if I have no limitation on the grid, I'm using AC charging. If I'm not limited in the grid and the driver have no time, I'm moving to fast DC charging. In case I'm limited in my grid, we have two solutions. If the driver have time, we moved to managed charging. Sometimes it's called fleet, sometimes it's called smart, and I think drives are one of the best solutions in the market for this. Basically, you manage your energy according to the available energy and split in time between your different chargers. However, what you do when your grid is limited and, you and the driver have no time? Basically, you need to create more power, and you don't have this power. And the solution, as I will show you, is a kinetic power booster. It's a power booster that takes low power from the grid and increases it significantly. I want to review a little bit the number of fast charging so we will have uh, an understanding. So a typical 400-kilometer car 
<coughs> has a battery of, a, of about 70 kilowatt hour. You cannot charge all of it in fast charging. You usually charge only three thirds of it. So about a charge of 50 kilowatt hour. What's the meaning of this 50 kilowatt hour fast charging? So if I charge it in, in two hours, as you see, it's 25 kilowatt. That's not so bad. By the way, 25 kilowatt is much more than most of the charger that you meet in India, right? Okay, if you do it in one hour, it's 50 kilowatt. That is what is called fast charger now in Europe. That's the lowest grade of fast charger in Europe. If you want to do it in 30 minutes, it's 100 kilowatt. And the grades of, of charger that are being installed in Europe right now are in the 100 to 150 kilowatt class. Yes, our customers, that's the charger they are used. If, you, if the time will be reduced more, you see that power goes up to 200 kilowatt, and if we reach the five minutes limit, it's 600 kilowatt, half a mega. Basically, we're speaking about charging system in the mega range. This is large, which means if you have a neighborhood and you want to put a charger in the neighborhood, this charger consumes more electricity than the whole neighborhood. And it means that it will need very costly grid upgrade. Grid upgrade is A, costly, and second, takes time. Actually, I believe the time frame that grid upgrade could be done will not fit the fast spread of fast charging and EV penetration. So there is mismatch in the, in the preparation, and actually uh, the infrastructure is considered to be one of the main problems in the penetration of uh, EVs. The solution for that is... is uh, uh, Quite, this repeats, basically we solved the user problem, now we can charge very fast. We created huge problem for the grid, specifically for the distribution grid, not to the transmission. In the transmission, the problem is, is smaller, but in the distribution grid that reached the neighborhood, we have a major problem. And I want to stress, the distribution grid is stressed all over the world. Why? It was built, let we, let's say, 20 or 30 years ago, and since then we just added electrical devices in the home. We started with one CRT, and now we have five LCD. We started with gas stove, and now we have those ceramic stoves. Okay? The consumption is going down, so the distribution grid is stressed all over the world. And now we want to come and put this fast charger in the neighborhood. Huge problem. And that's where we come, and that's the solution we bring. In order to explain our solution, I will use this simple example. When you go to the toilet, you need very strong current. Of course, you don't have enough water in the, in the pipes in the walls. So you have your flash tank, your local storage. And this is the, the solution that we found to get this very uh, strong current that we need to the toilet. So basically you can say we make a flash tank for electricity. Pretty simple product. If you look on the life of, of a charger, what this flash tank for a charger needs, it needs a typical ch fast charger is charging 20 cars per day. That means that over the lifetime of the charger, you have 70 to 100,000 cycle. This storage has to be filled and drained about 100,000 times. And also, those are very high power charge and discharge cycles. The typical way that we store electricity is using batteries. As I'm sure most of you know, no battery even can reach such number. We are between uh, two orders of magnitude in terms of cycle to one order of magnitude. So there's no battery that can fulfill that task. In order to do it, we developed this. This is a kinetic storage energy stored in a flywheel, fast rotating wheel. And the main advantage of this technology that it can do infinite cycles. It's not cycles limited. And because of this, our cost per cycle, our cost per one charge, the additional cost we add 
to each charging cycle is about one-tenth compared to a battery-based system. Actually, a battery-based storage system does not make sense. It will increase the, the cost of the charging too much and will not enable fast charging with storage. This system adds few cents to the charging, so uh, it makes storage-based charging possible. And except of all those economic and technical advantages, is also totally environmentally friendly. It's totally green, no emission, no chemical, and very easy recycling. Just to show you how this works, so first thing, the system is being charged from the grid. Yeah? Then the car comes, and electricity is coming from the storage and from the grid to charge the car. Our current systems are supporting 150 kilowatts, and we are preparing ourselves also to next generation that will, will be higher than that. A little bit about us as a company, we were founded in 2013, based in Israel. Uh, as you see, I'm not a young startup guy. It's actually my third startup, my third company, and is the most interesting one. Uh, we have excellent investors, leading uh, uh, industrial investors from Israel, and the technology is patented. Uh, Rollout have started. I want to speak about our three EV charging uh, pilots in Europe because Europe is the most advanced uh, uh, continent in terms of EV penetration. So our three partners, I will say the name, they are not written here, uh, but they are the real, really leading uh, uh, utilities in the continent. One is Enel, which is the second largest utility in the world. The other is E.ON, which is the largest utility in Germany. And just to give you the importance of those two utilities, Enel is in charge of building the fast charging corridors on the southern part of Europe. E.ON is building the fast charging corridors in the northern part of Europe. And our third, our third uh, customer in, in Europe is Vin Energy. That's uh, a leading utility, not very big, but very advanced in, uh, in Vienna. That's the utility of Vienna. That's all. Thank you.